Greta's going to be cooking uh, our uh, Canadian geese. I think she's going to do two of them on the fire. They take an average of about five to six hours for them to cook. So we'll get the fire going, get some coals, and then when they come in and actually hang the geese, so just keep adding smaller pieces of wood to keep the fire the temperature that they want. You know what, I'm just doing this by what I'm re trying to remember, but what do you call it? Um, like, I'm gonna run out of time here, so I'm going, I'm going quickly. It's gonna be super time here pretty soon. <clears throat> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> with a modern little twist. You have to. Let's <laughs> uh, add that to your... A modern little twist. Look at that. Better not fall, boy. You better not fall. You hear me? You better not fall. I'm gonna let you go now. Then you're gonna cook. Oh, it's a little bit over the fire here, a little bit. It's a little bit too, too, um, too close to the fire. Let me do. Right above the fire, I wanted to collect its. I wanted to collect its. Um, I wanted to collect its grease in the frying pan. I gotta go get that frying pan again. Yeah. Maybe I put it on this side. Eh, good day, Maka. Eh, good day, Maka. So how you kind of just you want the flame there, but you don't want it to ever touch the bird in any way. So I move the flame over a little bit even more. And then they'd have the racks up there. You see where it's smoky up there? They'd have the racks there, and then that's where they'd have the the uh, fish. There'd be like racks there, and there'd be fish hanging there, or the the goose. They'd call them the mastic. Um, they take all the the meat out of the out of the skin area, and then they lay it flat on top there, and they would they would. Um, Smoke that at the same time. When I was when I was doing up the bird here, what do you call it? I only found a little strong little piece of string, so I used the snare wire to tie up the rest of my um, my bird here. And here I got the other kind of wire with a with a fish swivel right there because I don't, I don't have any hooks. Those the hooks that they use, wishkutch, and then so the swivel here, it rotates the bird. You know what I mean? Um, consistently. When I when I tick it, you know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't go all the way up and then come back down like that. It just stays in the same distance from the from the flames. The meat is like uh, it's like rabbit we had last night, but it's um, a more richer. And starting to uh, the the skin is starting to gonna hold all the moisture pretty soon. And it's gonna start steaming, steam cooking. Bird, we were uh, we were turning on on the um, 
on the on open the fire. Awesome. On, on the open fire. I can't wait. Yeah. So we can just shave it off here? Yeah. Take that. I already cut it up and like that. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I just rip it right off the bone. Right that almost tastes like turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just rip it right off the bone like this. And snap it. <laughs> well, I'm going to do what you did then. Mm -hmm. It tastes like dark meat on a turkey. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it tastes like. That's awesome. That's this week's Wild Game Kitchen with at the Wesley Bow Guides Camp in Hearst. Well, I guess it's not quite Hearst. Where are we? On the Fire River. We're we'll just say that. River, we won't do, yeah. It's an undisclosed location. <laughs> Great job, Greta. Brought to you by Indigenous Tourism Ontario.